Welcome to the Recovery Soul Podcast. I'm Reverend Rachel Harrison. Today's episode is around the idea of the choice between moving forward towards love or the other path, which is around fear. And we may not even realize that we are actually making this choice. When we're in crisis and our life is in shambles and overwhelm, and we are completely filled with all of the pain and suffering that can come in our lives, we don't understand that there is part of us that is choosing the path of fear. And in soul recovery, we're learning we have a choice. My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Positive results in our lives will follow. For today's episode, I want to talk about the two paths that are available to us to walk in our life at any moment. We may think that we can stand still, but really we know there is no standing still. There is always movement one direction or the other direction. One direction is love and the other direction is fear. And it's interesting because I never really thought of this before. This wasn't where my mind came from when I was in the thick of my crisis and my suffering and my pain. And now that I've been doing soul recovery and recovered from alcoholism and recovered from codependency, still working on that. Not 100% recovered from codependency, but 90% recovered from codependency. What I realize, how much of our lives are really based on fear and pain. And interestingly enough, all those times when I thought that I was saving our family or trying to make things happen, what I was doing was I was not coming from love. I thought I was being loving, but the truth is I was really afraid. And so we can have a hard time differentiating between one and the other, and that's okay. Ultimately, in soul recovery, we're also telling ourselves that it's okay to be learning, that we're giving ourselves self-compassion and grace and tenderness, that it's not about figuring it all out at once. And what is an awareness for me may not be the same awareness that you have, that this is an individual journey. This is our individual curriculum of life. Now, if we can't stand still and that we're always moving one direction or the other direction, and you could think of them as paths, right? Instead of that we're going forward or backwards, really there's just two directions and maybe they both are straight ahead of us, but just separated out a little bit from one path to the other path. And when I visualize that, what it helps me to really see is that I can be constantly deciding that I want to go onto the other path, that there's a way to get to the other side if I feel like I've fallen off trail. So it's not about saying, oh, if you fall off, you'll never get back on the correct trail. No, totally. That's not it. The whole point is that at every moment we can make an adjustment, we can make a correction and we can come back to our center. Now, when I work with people and we do our one-on-ones, I start every session with a grounding, centering prayer. And what I do that for is because we can get so caught up in the craziness of the world and the world is crazy and there's all kinds of things going on and all kinds of stimulus and all kinds of people demanding our attention. And we have all these memories and all these projections and all these thoughts and all these worries and we've got all this stuff going on. It's like a million radio stations playing in our head at the same time. When we let that happen, we can't actually get centered into who we are, into ourself. By doing meditation, by doing centering and grounding prayers, Thich Nhat Hanh talks all the time about how we can always come back to that path of love through prayer, meditation, walking meditation, mindfulness of our breath, It's all about this awareness, this presence, 
this, being mindful of this moment and tuning down all those millions of radio stations. So when I start a session, I generally start with us taking a cleansing breath. And then I invite them to start to notice their breathing. We have this breath going on all the time and we don't even notice it. It's like we forget to breathe. We just take it for granted. Well, that's spirituality too, that we're taking that for granted. But when we stop and we take this time to turn within, close our eyes, come back to our breath, settle down a little bit, start turning down or off all those crazy radio stations and turning within, we come to this place of nowness. One of the great books of all time is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Now, Eckhart Tolle will tell you in his story, his life story, that he was in despair. He was in massive depression, and he was at that place that so many of us get where we think, what is the point? Why are we here? Why do I have to hurt so much? And he had a spiritual awakening. He had that moment where he realized, I choose. I, I actually get to choose how I'm going to be in my life. I can choose what my mind is going to be concentrated on. And he realized that the power of right now, which is also what Thich Nhat Hanh and Eastern philosophy and even Christianity in the teachings of Jesus to be present now. The time is here. The time is now. And to not ruminate on the past and to not fret about the future, but to be right here. So when you come into that time of mindfulness and you become aware of your breath and you start to tune down all the craziness from the outside then there's a quiet that comes within. And to me, this is the choice of love. Now, the word love is a complicated word. What does the word love mean? We can think of it in the human terms of being given something that makes us happy or giving something that fills people up. When I think of the word love in this way that we're talking about, what I feel is it's that deep connection to truth. It's that knowing that you are supported and held. It is that feeling that all is well, even if it doesn't feel well in this moment. It's the knowing that you are following the guidance and direction of a higher power. It's the trusting that everything's working out for its highest good. It is a inner well of contentment and ease and forgiveness. To me, that's what we mean when we talk about love in this context. And that that path, that way when we are walking that road of love, choosing that path, we are moving forward towards our full expression of ourselves. We're moving forward in forgiveness and allowing people to have their own experience. We're moving into a place of deep compassion and forgiveness for yourself and for all involved around us. We're opening to the knowing that we have a higher power who is there to support and love us. So what is fear? Fear encompasses all of the frustration, all of the pain, attaching ourselves to the pain, not the having the pain, because sometimes having the pain and feeling the full expression of our feelings can be on that love road. What we're talking about is attaching to the darkness and the suffering and the victimhood of pain and anger and resentment and grievance. Can you already feel how heavy that feels? That we want to hold on to what is making us suffer. We want to hold on to why we're upset, why somebody is causing us to hurt. When the truth is that when we use the soul recovery steps, when we use the steps of letting go of control, 
releasing our need to feel like we need to be responsible for everything and everyone in the world around us, that we realize we're powerless over people, places, and circumstances, that we can take off that heaviness of feeling like we need to hold on to the grievances, that there's justification for why we're upset and we need to punish the people in our lives that have upset us. When we do that, we're walking on this road of fear, this darkness, this road of pain and suffering. And it doesn't feel good, right? So our emotional GPS is telling us when something is leading us onto this more positive path of love, or it's taking us onto the darker, more heavy path of fear. You can tell the difference when you say something or do something and it feels light, or you feel relief, or it just feels right to you. You just, there's a knowing in it that you know that you've chosen the direction and the guidance of a higher power that's leading you to the lightness. And then if you do something, even in a situation where there's a fight, and you know that you're right in your belief, but you fight and you are putting it out there, what is yours to do, you can feel how that pulls you into the darkness. It doesn't open up for open-mindedness or open-heartedness or compassion or gentle listening. It really holds us in this place of fear. We're afraid that if we let go of our anger, that we'll lose something. But the truth is that when we choose love, when we choose that lighter path and we start to let go and release the feeling that we need to grip tightly to all of this pain, all of a sudden what it was and what we were so attached to and what we were grasping so hard to can begin to disappear. It can lighten up. I've said many times before my mantra for 2022 was, it is as I choose to see it. And I'm carrying that on to this year too. It is as I choose to see it. So I can choose to see it from love and from a place of spirit, or I can choose to see it from darkness and a place of hurt. When we start looking at these ways of being and we start thinking, which path do I want to walk? Path of love or the path of fear? And start to give yourself some self-compassion and tenderness and grace when we make that turn that goes into the fear place and not judge yourself and not be upset with yourself but to recognize oh is this a habitual pattern what what is it that makes me want to take this turn what is it that wants me to make this decision why am i choosing fear what am i afraid of those are those places of deep healing and this ability to begin to change how you interact with the world, to be able to begin to make different choices on a very conscious level. Instead of walking unconsciously on the earth, we can't stand still, right? So we're unconsciously walking, we're just doing our habitual patterns. Most of the time, if we're really honest, that habitual pattern is the one that is the darker road. And it takes a lot of effort to choose the lighter road. It actually takes effort to heal and to choose recovery. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make deep and real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media, join the private Facebook group, and even our monthly soul recovery support group on Zoom to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. 
If these episodes are helping you in any way and you want to donate, you want to really figure out how can I support this community and recover your soul, please look at the show notes below. There is a link to be able to donate monthly three, five, eight, or ten dollars. This cost of a fancy cup of coffee would really help support this community and recover your soul. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Both Alex and Bodhi were here at Christmas and they talked a lot about how their addiction is difficult for them, that they want to stop using, but the actual choice and decision to do that, the actual act of it is hard. They weren't making that choice at Christmas. And similar to last year, when Alex came back from the holidays, he did dry January and he picked back up in that healthy place that he did last year. If you listen to that episode of him starting to work out again and discovering that eating well is better for him and not drinking alcohol very much and not smoking pot very much. I don't think he's ever totally quit, but, you know, reducing way, 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 way down and how much better he feels. And then Bodhi's been really sharing that he's really struggling, that he's having a hard time. And so then we encourage him, Rich and I, in our healthiest new soul recovery way to encourage him in whatever ways, just to say, not telling you what to do, but just a reminder that this is what's been positive in my life. And if you take a look at your brother, he's doing this right now too, and he seems to be feeling better. So just something to look at. Coming off of the fear road sometimes just feels impossible. And it's so hard to grasp when we're in it, why we want to stay on that end. And if you're an addict, it's because your addict is in control. If you're like me, and part of my addiction is control, I'm a control addict, I have to look at if I let go of control, then I feel like it's all going to fall apart and I won't have power over anything. Well, the truth is you don't have power over it anyway. So I don't have control of my kids and whether they decide to use or not. That's my step one all the time. I'm powerless over my husband, my kids' addictions. I'm powerless over the world. I'm powerless over what people think of me. I'm powerless over whether things work out in some area of my life that I am trying to make happen. I just have to sit back and relax and choose the path of love, the path of trust, choosing one right thing and then the next right thing. But when you are in a place where it's hard to make that transition over, it feels overwhelming. To stay on the path of love also takes work. You have to make decisions on a regular basis to change your patterns, to think in different ways, to step outside of what you have created for yourself, which is this box of what we know, of what feels good to us that maybe still feels good but isn't working anymore food or alcohol or sugar sex shopping tv whatever that is but when you have this visual that says if i continue to walk down this dark road of fear if i continue to live from these patterns what is my life going to look like a year from now three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Really allow yourself to embrace what those things in your life will be like. What will your relationship be like? What will your relationship with yourself be like? What will your health be like? Will you be where you want it to be? Will you reach your goals? Will you attain the things that you know that spirit wants for you? Will you do that if you continue to mostly be on that dark road? And if the answer is no, I won't be where I want to be, then you find a reason to choose the light. You find a reason to do the extra steps and the work that it takes to get out of our ruts and to choose love and to not engage in arguments and to not engage in our addictions and to actively work hard to look at our internal patterns 
to choose forgiveness for ourselves and for the other people in our lives, to not hold on to these grievances, to not hold on to our self-doubt, to not hold on to our self-fear, and to open up to the truth that there is something beautiful, a higher power. There is a path, not a destination, but the journey is lighter. The journey has more peace involved in it. It's contented. It has ease and grace and joy and happiness and health. But that we have to choose to walk the path of love. We have to choose that path every day. As you're contemplating this and you're thinking, okay, Rachel, I hadn't thought of this before in the same way. I've always just kind of felt like I'm just hanging out in the middle. Ask yourself the question, are you really hanging out in the middle? If there really is one path or the other one, which one are you walking? If they're side by side, but they both feel different, and in the end, the journey is different, and even though there's not a destination, there's still a way that you will feel in the end, positive relationships, unhealthy relationships, abundance and money and things that you want, lack and stress and financial stress, healthy body, mind and spirit, stressful, unhappy, anxious body, mind and spirit. Which one do you want? You have to pick and you can pick. That's the beauty of soul recovery. You get to choose. You get to choose your attitude, pick a good one. So I hope you'll take this contemplation today, choosing love over fear. It's still the one tattoo I want to get in my life is I choose love, but I'm afraid of getting tattoos. Maybe I'll never get it, but I think of it all the time because every day I say to myself, I choose love. And I hope you will too. Just a quick shout out that if you need help with any of this and you need support, go to the website. The link is down below and book a coaching session with me. Even just one coaching session might change everything. I'd love to support you on your soul recovery journey. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my soul recovery journey? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with higher power, whatever that is for you, and then to discover and step into a happy and healthy life of your making. You can also become part of the Soul Recovery Community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's on Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website and get your Zoom link. It's the same link every month. We are also on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and now even Insight Timer. Yes, lots of ways to connect. There is even a private Facebook group that will allow you for more communication and conversation about soul recovery with your community. If you'd like an extra bonus episode every Friday, you can become an Apple Podcast subscriber or choose your tier level of giving on Patreon. I'd also love all the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time and give me five stars, a quick review, share the podcast with friends and family, make sure you're subscribing however you listen to the podcast. We're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you, thank you for going to the website, pushing the donate button, and giving whatever feels right to you. It means so much to me because I have this mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, everything that you do to be part of this community is making all that happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul.